Stand forward, said a voice that he could not pinpoint. It appeared to be all around and with him, him too. Jacob Jakes, you were given a soul to shape, and that shape would fit into your destination, and the destination of your choice is hell. So be there now, damned until a time when all that shaped you is no more. He could not feel or see his body, but he knew that he had some form in existence, that felt his mind and memories as if he was young again. His soul he could feel as if it was in front of him. It felt dark and corrupted and weighed him down. He looked about at his new surroundings. They were hard to describe, even perceive. It was dark and murky as one might imagine a cold cave. There struck him an immense loneliness and sadness about the walls. The air was stifling and made breathing painful to the chest, as if he contained some kind of vapour that was hot to taste. The heat inside was all-consuming, but the source could not be seen. Everything to touch felt hot, but not hot enough to make this heat that felt as if he was being slowly roasted and cooked. Meet your children, Jacob, said a voice. Did I have children? From the rocks emerged four children, all about two foot tall, each with Jacob's Jake's rough face on their small shoulders. These are your children. Evil, greed, selfishness, and hate. The children ran up to their father that bore them and started to tear away at his flaky flesh, which started to come off their hands, solid blood, blood popping to the ground. As this occurred in the distance came three figures. One was a German snurred. The voice spoke to him. He questioned it why he was in hell, not heaven. And the voice told him that he was only interested in his own self and career, and how he supported that was evil, as if he committed the crime himself. He saw Jacob Jakes and started to tell the unknown voice, he is the reason I am here, because I arranged his funeral and his instructions, because I colluded with him and came as he instructed to film him. The voice remained silent and spoke. You are here because you spoke that of which others committed, as if it was a thing that should be celebrated. Flame started to engulf Snurd's body and he screamed as he faded away, and then from behind him came Jacob's mother and father. You too shall enter this day, this place, for making the man in front of you, you abused and lacked love, was this man's daily intake. You are part of the reason of his darkening, of the pure soul that was given to him. Jacob Jakes looked at his parents in the most forlorn look imaginable, yet it was hard to tell whether it was a pity or pain, and they too began to burn in front of his eyes till they appeared black and charred and were gone. He turned away to find his children gone, having removed all the dead flesh of his body, to reveal a dark black plastic-like skin that covered him now, which upon it had the faces of all he killed, as well as that bubbled within as the silent faces screamed pain. As Jacob walked through the caves of hell, he was led to a large bridge, and below it was a layer upon layer of caves, open from the top, filled full of billions of sinners. Inside he saw different pains and people, and by looking at them he had the sense of their crime and punishment, and to it felt hurt upon his eyes as he looked. He saw countless politicians and world leaders, bank managers, economic migrants, solicitors, brokers, liars and cheats, greedy men holding their tight, holding tight their money, those that lived in riches whilst those close by suffered, wife beaters, adulterers, torturers, selfish and mean-spirited people, journalists, moneylenders and people of all types as he stared down upon them. He felt the urge to heave and the endless ooze fell upon those below him who each on their own level of pain suffered until their time end. A new voice came and a white sainted body walked in. It is only fitting that I should be the one to pass your judgment on to you, for it was you who took my dignity away, took me away from my family and kept me as a trophy. Jacob Jakes looked at the man who stood in front of him, but did not recognize him at all, but then the list of those he killed was long. I am a loyal servant, and my life I led was pure and good, and it is you who took the fitting end I deserved, and it is with that, Mr. Jacob Jakes, that I judge you to be born a pure soul, whose life, like all that walk in here, was a choice of pathways, and that which you chose was the way to here, and the cost of the poor soul you were given, to cherish and furnish, so that you might, like me, enter heaven. You shall labor within this domain till your blackened soul is cured. But I changed, 
project of fear and the pain of this chosen existence. Yes, for a moment, when faced with the fear of death and the afterlife, with illness you changed, but your last acts were that of your old character, to which you find yourself here. For every moment, every thought you ever had was witnessed by us all here, with great detail, more than any man could compile. And we saw the night you walked down to the X-ray department and sliced with surgical precision into your stomach and placed from a previous excursion in an incendiary device and timer. We felt your thought as you phoned Snurred and told him that he would be the first person to film your dead body. We felt your sinister plan as you drew him in and took the X-ray once you had cleaned up your wound and placed in the doctor's office so it could be found and hid the knife under your bed and slumped under the sheets where you bled to death. And as you thought, those last moments had fell into unconsciousness. To the last moments we felt your thought of your ecstatic joy that you would be a killer even at your own funeral. Who are you? said Jacob Jakes. Do you not recognize me? Of course not. You saw me when I was dead. I am the one you can never kill. And you know me only too well. My name is Mr. Klondike Cracker. And I welcome you to your home, he said. And then was gone. Jacob Jakes spoke the unknown voice loudly, as if it were from right above him. But he found his very chest vibrate with every syllable. You are at the very highest place in hell, so that all below can see your suffering and pain. Even some of your victims can spit upon you venom. Every pain you shall know upon your tongue and mind, so corrupt is your soul that it is purging, shall cause the heat of pain to pass even through, pass through even your synapses. The cave he was within became transparent, as if there was nothing, yet he was not falling. And from below, all the sinners looked up and cried as they spat venom at him, causing his body to lacerate and the walls on his skin to bubble continuously. The wells on his skin to continue to bubble continuously. Mr. Jacob Jakes looked around him with a sense of real fear, and yet too it could be discerned from his face that look of acceptance one sees on a small child when he comes to admit to his parents something he had done and is ready to take the punishment he so rightly deserves. From all directions, from a source unknown, where there was no wall nor any kind of form, as if it came from an open space or nowhere at all, came that which looked like something between a thunder strike and an electric discharge. The lines were waved in orange-red, and from many points of unknown origin, they covered their coverage upon the different parts of Jacob Jake's black plastic-like skin, and every well was struck by the beam, and the continuous current continued the level of pain which could be heard throughout every chamber of hell. It was as if a man was being electrocuted forever, and those below could smell the distinct smell of burning flesh. Smoke even arose from parts of his body, and the wells erupted like volcanoes, and the lava of acid ran down his body, causing it to enter within his body and to his soul. And each with each eruption he felt them, as if they transferred to his body. The beams lifted him high in the air for all to see. Every so often the beams would strike the same place on his body and a flash of flames of bright white intensity mixed with red would flare across the wound it created as if it were piercing something deep within. He would leap in pain and rage, screaming and shouting as every millisecond he was administered pain. His body would remain in the same position for a millennia until his soul was vanquished of the evilness that he administered to it every day that he lived.